Hi, this is ET350 lecture 19 and today we're going to talk about a mathematical description of this flux density and how it relates to a spinning magnetic field and how it's coming from three phase current. Um, before we get to that point, though, um, we'll look at uh, single phase for P equals two, four, and six, and then we'll kind of work our way into the equation, right? Um, the last thing we'll do is just look at what kind of physical intuition can we gain from the equation? And then finally, uh, if you're still interested, we'll look at a proof, okay? So three phase current, which creates a spinning magnetic field. Well, I think we kind of showed that before we had the stator and we showed the three phase current. We looked at the magnetic field as it spun around. But like I said, I want to show an equation. This is actually the equation I want to get to. Um, and so let's parse it out. We have B, okay, is equal to some amplitude times the cosine of omega t minus p over 2 theta s. And right now it kind of looks a little bit uh, mysterious and familiar at the same time. You have a cosine, you have omega t. We know currents kind of have this cosine omega t with some phase, but we're not used to seeing it with uh, flux density or the magnetic field. But we will show later that this equation actually describes a spinning magnetic field around our stator, right? And that's what we know and love for induction devices and soon to be uh, synchronous devices, okay? Um, just uh, some facts about this. I know you, you, kind of, uh, you kind of don't know what's going on yet, but this B max is uh, related to current. We know that from Ampere's law, right? This omega is going to be related to the electrical frequency of the current. The P is going to be the number of poles per phase. And the theta S is going to be the mechanical angle around the stator. We will also come to this nice familiar conclusion that the synchronous speed is related to the electrical frequency divided by P over two. And we saw this already before when we studied a two pole and four pole system, okay? So I want you to keep this in the back of your mind. Don't get lost in the details now. We're going to work our way to this equation, okay? All right, so let's look at a single phase system. We'll look at different number of poles and see what intuition we can glean from that. Okay, so I'm gonna look at a cylindrical design. And what does a cylindrical design versus a salient design look like? Well, it's this. So this is what you're familiar with. We had our salient, you know, you have the coils just kind of wrapped around each of the tooth here. Here, a cylindrical design, you have the coils kind of wrapped down the cylinder uh, length. Okay, so this would be like your A, your B, and your C phase, okay? Um, and what we're going to look at is how our B changes with different positions theta S around a stator. So this is the front view of the stator, then uh, how, how does that B field change, okay? All right, so let's go to the first two-pole single phase example. And so this would be our cylindrical wound design, just one phase, right? Just an A phase, okay? And so you can see just by the way I've drawn it, the current, if it was positive, remember this is gonna be AC, but if it was positive at this frozen instant of time, the current would come here and it would go uh, uh, towards us in the, in the top, down, and then away from us on the bottom, and then just loop around and feed back. And by Ampere's law, you would create a flux density going to the right if the current's positive. If the current flips to negative because it's AC, then the B would flip negative, okay? And we can say here, see this little alpha, that means proportional to, right? So um, it's proportional to I. Actually, I should write it as this. I should say B is proportional to just I or it's equal to KI, if that makes sense, right? That's a, a more correct way to say it. So B is either proportional to I by Ampere's law or equal to some constant sometimes I, okay? All right, so let's walk ourselves around the stator. So we're at a frozen instant of time where the current is positive, okay? So if the current is positive, yep, we're getting a B field going to left to right and we have a south and north end, good. And if we measured, if I had a, a Gauss meter or a Tesla meter and I measure the flux density at this point, I'm gonna measure a maximum, and let's assume out is positive, a maximum positive amount at theta S equals zero. Now, as I move my Gauss meter around and around and around here, I'm going to expect something very close to zero at theta S is 90 degrees. 
Now, if I keep my same orientation of my Gauss meter moving around and around and around here and here, what I'm gonna see is that the B is maximum, but now it's negative, right? Because now N is gonna be negative and I'm at theta S equals 180 degrees. As I get to 270, I'm gonna see B is approximately zero, right? And this is just for a static current, right? Nothing AC, it's just a fixed current. This is just behaving like a magnet, right? So as I move my Gauss meter all the way around this a static electromagnet, I would see something like this. If I were to plot that meter, Gauss meter reading around the circumference, I would see this kind of shape. And we know what that looks like. It looks like a cosine. And so we could say the B around the stator as a function of this angle is the cosine of that angle times whatever the maximum is. And that maximum is related to this K, all right? So the Ampere's law. Okay, that's no problem, easy. Well, what if I have two poles? Right? And so two poles might look like this. So here's a front view, uh, sorry, four poles. Two poles looks like this, four poles looks like this, right? Two poles north south. Here, what do we have? So imagine currents coming in here on the upper right corner. So it's kind of looping in and out and then in and then out and then back to the source, if that makes sense, okay? And so if this current is static, it's unchanging, I can do that same game I played here. Over here at theta s equals zero, I'm going to see a north. So I'm going to get a maximum B, and then I'm going to get zero, and then I'm going to get a negative B, and I'm going to get zero, and I'm going to get a positive B, zero, negative B, zero. Okay, so it looks like I kind of doubled the frequency. And you can see that B max from zero goes to negative here, good. And it goes to 180 and it goes back to negative and it goes back to or the original starting point at 360. So if we were to write that as an equation, it's a cosine for sure, right? But now I have to have a little factor here. Well, what's the factor? I have four poles here, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, I think I got two, right? Because it doubles the frequency. Notice four and two two and one. Okay, I hope that pattern is starting to stick. And the B max is related to the Ampere's law. Okay, let's keep going. So what about six poles? Same one phase. And now we have something like this. I added just another pole, right? Alternating as well. So this is like the, it's like a wave wound. Current goes up and in and up and in and up and in and then back to its source. And again, I get positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? And all these little intermediate points are zero, right? Zero, 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 zero. So it looks like I get an even higher frequency. Look at this, V max minus plus, minus, plus, minus. And so because I have three cycles, I'm gonna add a three here, okay? And so I had one, two, and three, but I had two, four, and six. And so if I generalize that, I could see that, well, in general, I would get B equals B max cosine times P over two theta S. That would be the pattern. I think you can see that works because here I have six poles. If I put a six, six divided by two is three, good. If I had that same thing here, four divided by two would be two, good. And if I go back to this one, two divided by two would be one. That's what I see here, okay. So in general, if I have a static single phase, my B uh, mathematical equation related to the position around the stator would be this form, B max related to Ampere's law, cosine of P over two theta S. Okay, not too bad. What about three phase? Hmm, what about three phase? Well, that would look maybe something like this in a two pole system. Right, so I've just added three phases, B and C on top of the A, and I've rotated the B and C 120 degrees away from uh, A, right? 120 degrees from A is B, 120 degrees from B is C, okay? And I've drawn it away where if, if you have positive current, you're going in towards us and around. Here, if you go B, you go in towards us and around, and then same with C, I go in towards us and around. Okay, good. So if I were to look at the front view just like this for two poles, okay, this is two poles. So maybe I'll just put this in example. P equals two example. Then what do we have? 
current coming towards us if it's positive, B coming towards us if it's positive, and C coming towards us if, it, if it's positive. All right. And so for these three coils in this static current, now I'm not assuming these are uh, offset 120 yet. I'm just saying they're all positive, right? Um, they're all constant. I would get this equations, these three different equations for the three different coils. So this is the original one. We already derived that here. Now the B uh, of the B <laughs> coil, the magnetic flux density of the B coil would be the same form, but I would have a minus 120 degree mechanical phase lag because I've literally rotated it by 120 degrees. Okay. Now for the C coil relative to the A coil here would be a minus 240 degree phase lag because it's rotated, the blue one is rotated 240 from A. And that should make sense. So that means my total flux density is going to be the sum of all three of these. Okay, not so bad, not so bad. Now, what about B max for each phase, right? So again, we, we write Ampere's law. Ampere's law, if we have a coil of wire, which essentially these are coils of wire, we can see that we get a B, right? We know B max is proportional to I or B max equals Ki. So what about if we now introduce the three phase where this is electrically offset? Well, we get our familiar IA equals IM cosine of omega T. We get IB equals IM cosine of omega T minus 120. Now this 120 is not a mechanical phase uh, lag, it's an electrical phase lag, right? So here's mechanical, here's electrical, right? And we know that because we have the three currents, IA, IB, IC, all 120, and the same with here, this minus 240. Okay, so this, what is this B max? This B max is actually that guy in here. What is this K? This is just the amplification via Ampere's law from current to flux density. It depends on the mu and the number of turns and all that good stuff. What is this I? Well, that I is gonna be one of these guys, depending on which coil you're looking at. And so if you were to put them all together, you would get this. You would say that the B total is equal to BA. Well, what's BA? BA is B max, which is essentially K times IA. So what do we have? K times IA, good, times cosine of P over two theta S, no problem. What about BB? BB is B max B. What's B max B? It's K times IB, right? So that's K times this with the minus 120 times this guy P over two theta S minus 120. And what about BC? Well, BC is not too bad, it's B max. Well, what's B max again? It's K times IC, which is this guy here, I am cosine of AT minus 240, times this guy cosine of P over two theta S minus 240. Not too bad. Now I'll show it at the end and I wanna get bogged down too much in this trig, but with some trig in algebra, we actually, this thing reduces down to this fairly clean equation. This is the same equation we showed on the very first slide. Okay, so this is where it's coming from, right? three halves K I am cosine of omega T minus P over two theta S. So theta S just to review is the position around the stator. P is the number of poles per phase. Omega you can directly see is now coming from the electrical frequency. How fast the electrical frequency is oscillating. I am is the amplitude of the current, right? And then K is the Ampere's law coefficient, right? It's like how, how much amplification are you getting from I to B? Number of turns, permeability, all that good stuff. Okay, and the three halves is just the consequence of the trig. Okay, so where, what can we do with this equation? What does it mean? How can we interpret it, right? Well, we can interpret it as a way to describe a total magnetic field generated by three phase balanced current. And it actually describes the spinning magnetic field. It's kind of neat. So let's, uh, let's move on to this next slide where we go into the physical intuition. So the physical intuition was actually um, provided to me by a student. A student actually asked me, is it like a, a stadium wave? And I'm like, yes, that is exactly what it's like. Okay, so let's go back to this equation. And I want you to think this theta S is representing a position of a fan. Okay, think position of a fan seated. Oh, I already had it here. Think a position of a seated fan around the stadium. Okay, and then I want to think this omega is related, it's not exactly the speed of the wave, but it's related to the speed of the wave. And 
this uh, this amplitude is essentially like the height of the wave. Maybe you could think of it like that, right? Like how high you stand up, I guess. All right. So here's the picture. Imagine you have your stadium, and imagine you know you you, you have all done the wave. I hope, right? Um, you you stand up and you sit down. You stand up and sit down, right? So from the position of a fan sitting here, let's say fan one sitting here, he's gonna see, he or she's gonna see just an up and down motion. But this wave is gonna be traveling around, right? And so we'll say omega s is the, uh, is the speed of the wave. And let's say this other fan sitting over here is gonna also experience an up, just an up and down. But the up and down of this guy and the up and down of this guy they're gonna be just phase lagged depending on where they are seated. But if you were just to sit there in one part of the stadium, right? The stadium, quote unquote, or the stator, right? This is, remember, don't, don't get lost. We're, we're, we are talking about electric motors here. Then the position at one stator will just experience an up and down magnetic field, okay? And this, but they combined every, everything is gonna be a wave, right? That's kind of neat. And so, and you can see that. Look at this, you have a amplitude cosine of omega t minus some constant phase. So if this phase is, let's say, 30 degrees, you'll be phase lagged by 30 degrees. If this one is minus 270 degrees, then you'll be phase lagged even more by 270 degrees. Okay, so I hope you can see that this is familiar territory. Okay, well, what about the speed of the wave? So same equation. Can we determine the angular speed? We'll call it omega s, right? I think you've seen an omega s before. Remember synchronous speed of the wave. Remember that's the actually the speed of the magnetic field. Okay. Well, can we get it? So let's again go to back to our stadium, and uh, let's say we have our wave going around, and think of omega s as like a d theta s dt. Think of that as the speed of the wave, right? And so instead of a fan seated, you're, you're, you're like a bird that's able to fly around and observe this, uh, observe this peak. And let's say you're a bird that happens to be exactly flying at the same rate as the wave goes around, okay? So you're at the peak, okay? So if you're riding the peak of the wave around the stadium, you're that bird flying around, okay? And you happen to be exactly matched with the speed of the wave, well, how, could we, could we see that from here? Can we get a relationship between the speed of the wave and this equation? Well, let's, let's figure it out. Okay, at the peak, how do we make a peak mathematically? Well, mathematically, the peak for a cosine occurs when you have a zero in here. We've done this before, actually, when we analyze the peak time, right? You guys remember the peak time calculation back in uh, ET250? Well, we can do the same thing. We can say zero equals this. So omega t minus p over two theta s equals zero. And if we take a simple derivative, what do we get? Omega, the t goes away, right? right? If we take a derivative of this with respect to time, assuming omega is constant and assuming p is constant, but let's say theta s is no longer constant. Well, we would have to say omega minus p over two d theta s dt equals zero if this is not constant. Okay, so this is essentially the rate I would need to spin at to be riding the peak, okay? And so you can see if I say d theta, s dt equals omega s, then this equals omega divided by p over two. You've seen this before. This is our synchronous speed equation. And what it's saying is that the synchronous speed or the speed of the peak of the wave moving around the stadium or the stator is related to the electrical frequency of the current divided by the number of poles over two. So you've seen this before. That's kind of nice. So this is kind of predicting the same thing. It's just another way of getting to the same kind of thought. But I like this equation because it's a concise equation that's relatively sim simple, right? An amplitude cosine of some omega t minus some phase. You've seen this over and over and over with electrical current, right? Now we're just applying it to the magnetic uh, field. And uh, just to repeat, think of theta s as the, the seated position around the stadium, stadium or stator, right? And omega is related to the speed of that wave. In fact, omega divided by p over two is exactly the speed of this wave, okay, cool. So let's go back to the physical stator, right? Remember now IA, IB, and IC are AC. They're balanced, they're moving, they're oscillating, right? 
And so that means B at any fixed point here or here or here, just like this fan in the stadium is also experienced just AC. And you can kind of imagine these coils are just pumping, right? They're going in and out. So if I just look at this coil, it's boom, 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 boom. Same with B coil, boom, boom, right? Up and down, up and down, up and down. And this blue coil up and down, up and down, up and down, right? But what makes it special is that because the three phase current is shifted 120 degrees electrically and these coils are shifted 120 degrees mechanically, you get this synthetic magnetic spinning field, which is really cool. Okay, and it's all described by that equation, right? So you can get there either way, maybe a more mathematical approach, or you can get there just kind of imagining uh, what the B field will look like at different points in time. Okay. All right, the last thing I want to do, um, you, can, you can end the video now if you want, but I just wanted to show you the proof of how we got to this equation. So BT equals 3 halves KIM cosine of omega T minus P over 2 theta S. This is the equation we've been working with. And uh, if you recall, we had the total B as the addition of these three, and we had this equation from before. So this is incorporating the current and our flux for the A, B, and C coils, right, with the balance three phase. Now, I can pull in a nice trig identity. The multiplication of two cosines is actually equal to one half times the cosine of, of this argument minus that one, plus the cosine of this argument plus this one. Okay, so I can apply it three times to these three phases A, B, and C. And so this one's pretty easy. It's K, K I am pulling it out. So what do we get? One half cosine of A. Well, what's A in this case? It's omega T. What's B in this case? It's P over two theta S. So minus P over two theta S plus cosine of the addition of those two. This one, the next one is actually pretty easy. This is the new A, this is the new B, right? So you can see omega T minus 120 uh, plus this one, or uh, minus, sorry, this one, right? And then you get the, the plus version and then same for the, the blue C. Okay, now if we look closely, some things cancel. Look at this, minus 120 and the 120 cancel. And here minus 240 and this 240 cancel which means that one, two, and three are all the same. That's kind of cool. That'll combine to three times one of these. And then if we look closely here, we get minus 240 and we get minus 480 in this one. And minus 480, if I think about it, let's see, minus 480, what do I do? I'm gonna go this way around a circle. So I go 360 around and the leftover is 120. So it's same as 120. So I can rewrite this like so. So three times, see this one, one, two, three, there's three of those. And I can write this one. So I have cosine of omega t plus p over two theta s. I have this one, which is the minus 240 over there. And I have this one minus 120 there, okay? So if I look at this one, they all have the same frequency and they all have a phase offset by 120 degrees. Well, if you recall our phasor math, we can actually represent it on the complex plane. And what we see, if we do a vector sum of this, this, and this, we come right back to zero, right? That's kind of nice. All these mathematically cancel. So you're only left with this. That's pretty clean. So this proof is like what? You apply a trig identity, see some cancellations, not too bad. Okay, so again, just to review, this is a mathematical description of the flux density around a stator or stadium. This is the, a position of a measurement you would take around the stator. And this just shows you the electrical frequency and how, as it oscillates, how B is gonna oscillate. Okay, I hope you learned something. I hope this helped with your intuition. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See y'all in class.